And welcome back, uh, Year 12. This is uh, Mr. Med here for Lesson 2 uh, on the logistic equation. So the aims of this video will be twofold. So the first point that we'll do is um, we'll find the initial conditions to evalu evaluate the constant C. Um, so C is equal to this, and we need to figure that out. Uh, secondly, we'll apply the logistic equation to a particular example and the one I've chosen is tumour growth in mice and um, I'm basing that off a, a paper that I found online and I'll put a link to that in Schoology. Alright, so recall that we started with, um, with this. We started with the logistic equation and we had to solve it. So, um, so the DE for the logistic equation was dn dt equal to Rn over K brackets K minus N. Yes, and we solved that. We solved that, solves two. And we ended up with, you might recall, um, back here, um, we ended up with this from the previous lesson, right? So, so we get N is equal to K over uh, C to the E to the negative RT uh, plus one. Okay, so it solves to that where uh, C was equal to 1 over A and you might recall that A was equal to E to the C um, where C was the constant of integration. So, so all of this, so this is, we'll call this little C and this big C, I guess, just to distinguish between the two. So this all came out of, when we integrated, we had, we had the constant of integration. Okay, so ultimately this C here um, is some constant and it could it could equal anything depending on our parameters our choice of parameters and initial conditions okay um, so constant integration all right. all right so here's what we're going to do now we're going to state our initial conditions right I don't think I stated them in the last lesson so that's okay we'll do it now it's pretty straightforward uh, we're just going to say when time is zero the population is n sub zero, and we'll, you know, impose a further condition that n sub zero must be positive. Okay, All right. So we're going to use this. Good. All right. So come in over here. So this is the differential equation. This is the solution to the differential equation. So if we work off, working off the solution, right? n equal to k over c e to the negative r t plus 1. Uh, we're going to now substitute in n equal to n o, t equal to 0. Okay, and so we do that, we get n sub 0. Here we get k, we get c e to the 0 effectively, plus 1. Now hopefully we know by now that e to the 0 is 1. It's a uh, a very fundamental index law. So this this simplifies to be k over c plus one. Now n sub zero. Okay, how does that help? Um, well, uh, we need to get an expression for c, don't we? So let's let's cross multiply. In other words, let's swap c plus one and n, n sub zero. Right. So we can do that. It's just a simple case of cross multiplying. This, instead of dividing by c plus 1 on the right hand side, we multiply on the left. And instead of multiplying by n sub 0 on the left, we, multiply, we divide on the right. Okay, looking good. c is equal to k on n sub 0 minus 1. c is equal to k over n sub 0 minus n sub 0 over n sub 0. Yes. Uh, the idea here is that we have a fraction minus 1. Uh, we want to write this as one fraction, so we need a common denominator. So we turn 1 into n sub 0 divided by n sub 0, and then we end up with this, k minus n sub 0 divided by n sub 0. And we have the statement for C um, that we needed. This is basically um, the thing that we had up here that we had to find out. So. If you look at the assignment, task two, 
you'll see the first part of that assignment and I'm just going to flick my gaze over to the task now uh, I think it's question 5 it says solve or show that the solution to the differential equation so show that the solution to this differential equation um, is equal to this where the C value the C constant here is equal to this and that's that's question 5 um, the only difference between what you see here and what I've done, <coughs> excuse me, is that um, I'm using n for my population variable, whereas in the in the task sheet for the assignment, it's it's p. Okay, so there you go. That's it. So so we've done. We've got our statement for for c. Now we're going to look at how we can apply this logistic equation to um, to tumor growth of mice. So let's go to a new sheet. Okay. Let's write, let's write all this stuff up again. So the logistic equation, the solution to the logistic um, equation um, is this n equals k over c e to the negative r t plus 1 where c is equal to k minus n sub 0 over n sub 0. Um, there's our model, right? And we know, graphically, we know it's looking like this S-curve, okay? Where well, that's time, that's population, this is K, the limit, the carrying capacity, and this is N sub zero. So we could just do a little list here, N sub zero is the initial population, um, K is the carrying capacity, and don't forget that we've got R, carrying capacity. Don't forget we've got R, which is the rate of growth of the population. So they're the parameters. Parameters, parameters. There it is. Okay. Now, here's the example that we're going to look at. So um, the example that we're going to look at. So your example will be in the assignment, uh, task six. Uh, you'll be looking at the US population um, since I think the late 1700s um, and so what you're going to have to do essentially in the assignment is to apply some data or you know there's some data for the US population growth over the last I guess 200 years um, so you're going to have to work out what some of the parameters are based on those those numbers based on that data and you're going to have to graph it uh, you're going to have to guess do a bit of guessing as well I think so let's let's look at this one here. So tumor, the growth of tumors in mice, tumor growth in mice, and so looking at this article here, you can't see it obviously. I can, but I'll, as I said, I'll post a link. Um, oh, here's 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 another joke. Um, where is it? Um, where are you? Uh, I thought I had a joke here. Oh, what did Al Gore play on his guitar? An algorithm. Okay, here's another one. Um, did you hear the one about the statistician? Probably. Um, <laughs> no, you've, you've probably heard this one. Why did the chicken cross the Mobius Strip to get to the same side? Uh, why did calculus majors throw house parties? Oh no, that's not right. Sorry. Why don't calculus majors throw house parties? Because you should never drink and derive. There you go. Okay. That, that'll, that'll do. Here we go. Right. So looking at this example here, um, some data was collected and we have the initial um, number of tumor cells, if you like, is 4 by 10 to the 7. Okay, so that's the number of tumor cells, um, number of tumor cells at time zero. Okay, so that's at time zero, obviously. And the other information we're given here is that the, the upper limit to the number of tumor cells is 150 by 10 to the seven, and the rate of growth is 0.6. Now, um, from that, from those parameters, those given parameters, 
uh, we can work out what C is going to be, right? Now, here's the thing. So, this equation combined with this statement for C, if we, if we put that together, so, uh, so let's have a look. If we put those two things together, we end up with this equation here. N, N is equal to K over K minus N sub 0 over N sub 0. Here all in brackets there, e to the negative rt plus 1. Okay, that's a little bit unwieldy, so it's probably better if we just think of it in, in, in terms of this, this form here, and then we, we'll just figure out what k is. So, so we won't do this, okay? That's, that, this is preferable, okay? This is not. Okay, so, um, so coming back to this example, right? So the, the tumour growth in mice... Uh, we can we can figure out C. So here we go. So uh, so the tumor growth example, tumor growth in mice. I've written that out again. I oh, know. Yep. Um, so we've got C is equal to K minus n sub zero over n sub zero, um, which is equal to so K is 150 by 10 to the seven. N sub zero is four by 10 to the seven, and then divided by four. By 10 to the 7. Now, if we think of think of this in, just in terms of C, um, sorry, in, in sort of orders of magnitude of 10 to the power of 7, uh, what we're really looking at here is um, what 146 over 4 by 10 to the 7, which is do a quick calculation. Uh, that will be. Seventy-three divided by two, thirty-six and a half. So we're looking at thirty-six point five by ten to the seven for our C value. Okay, good. Um, R is point six. Okay, so here's our model. So here's our model. So our model will be n equal to. So using this this model here. So k we said k was one hundred and fifty by ten to the seven. Um, C is 36.5 by 10 to the 7 um, times E to the negative RT. So R is 0.6 T plus 1. Now, that doesn't look so attractive. So we can just write it like this. This, this would be better. 36.5 E to the 0.6 T plus 1. Um, where n is population uh, in tens of millions, yep, and t is time, and I didn't define time before, but time is essentially in, I'm guessing, hours. Does it say or does it say? Maybe hours is a bit, days is probably more like it. I think it must be days. Has to be. Yeah, so time is in days. Okay, so there we have it. So there's our model. Okay, now you can imagine if you're doing this for, um, for the population of the US, um, you know, this number here, my, the population of the US at the moment is about three, well, it's over 300 million. So you can imagine this number here is going to be at least that. Um, and then this number here will be something less than that. Um, we can easily calculate it. Uh, we need to know what the rate of growth of the US population is too. Okay, so, uh, and then if we do a plot of that, so obviously we know the shape, something like this. You know, this number here is K is 150. Uh, the initial population, we said that was, um, that was 4. That's N. And that's time. And, and I guess we could, um, we could evaluate the population at any time, okay, by finding points on this curve. Um, I think with the assignment that you're doing, it's more the case that you'll be comparing different models. So we'll look at different scenarios of where the carrying capacity, because you don't know what the carrying capacity is going to be for, for human population. 
we can only speculate or you know use some educated guesses I, I suppose um, so we'll come up with maybe I think three different models and we'll just compare them comparatively so so you might have just give you a just roughly sketch this out you might have um, you might have a population that's doing something like this where it increases quickly so R is R is high um, versus R which isn't high so all three of these models may have the same carrying capacity um, but they have a varying R value okay so this is this is a slow growth versus a quick growth um, but the carrying we, we're assuming the carrying capacity is the same so this is a constant um, a, a different way to look at this of course would be to say well well let's think about um, different carrying capacities um, but perhaps with the same rate or maybe something similar I don't know um, so all three th so these have K that vary these three have K that vary and R might be might be a constant or something like that yeah so yeah and <clears throat> ultimately what you can do let's this this is probably probably the preferred way to look at it because um, we might we might set R as a I'm trying to remember you read the um, task sheet um, here it is. Uh, investigate the effects of changing R and K. Yeah, so I think we're doing both. I think we're doing both. Uh, create several models uh, with comparative plots using reasonable values of R and K. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So we might do both. Um, so we might, you know, you might have six different models here. <clears throat> I'll talk to you more about this um, when I... I mean, it's really up to you how you approach it, of course, but I'll give you some suggestions on maybe a good approach uh, where well, you don't necessarily have to do six different models, but this is an example of what you could do. Okay, so three where uh, you have a varying rate of growth and three where you have a varying ca carrying capacity. And if we have six different models here, then we can compare those models to the actual population. Um, and we can make some judgments based on on what the population is actually doing now, and what you know, we're speculating that it that that it could do. Um, all right, that's enough. Thanks. See ya.